Welcome back everyone. Uh, we have Turk back with us again. And uh, we're going to go through the DE much faster than yesterday, hopefully. We're, we're going to summarize more. Yeah, we're going to summarize more. We're going to keep it under 30 minutes, that's the goal. Uh, and if all else fails, under 40 minutes. But 30 is the goal for now. Um, so we're going to start off with this Brazilian post from day 16 yesterday, and this is episode, crap, I forgot what episode, episode 5, I think it's episode 5. No. Yep, it's episode 5. Alright, there you go, Turk said it. Um, President P. Word announces new alliance in South America and Colombia. Uh, they're allied with Colombia. And, uh... Argentina? Okay, he's trying to make a South American alliance like the League of Nations. Why don't we just join the League of Nations? Who knows? Um, That's it? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, okay, he's also announced that he's using artillery to strike. Or he's been asked to be ready to strike Colombia at any time. Um, so yeah, he's ready to bomb Colombia. Uh, Sweden's post, up to you, Turk. Alright, Finns, uh, Finns open fire on Swedish charity workers. A vile act of aggression has been done today. Swedish, char Swedish charity workers, I can't pronounce Swedish for some reason, uh, working with the local Communist Party in the Polish northern capital of Tallinn. So basically Sweden and Finland have been at war for the last two days or two or three days and Poland's in this as well. So Sweden at the moment is trying to come up with a good reason to be able to continue its strikes into Finnish territory and it's been going pretty well so far. He's been he's bombarded and taken Monio and Ivalo those two provinces. And right now they're at a, I think either stalemate or a ceasefire. I think they, well, at the time of this article, they went back to war, but I think they go back to peace. Uh, and they'll probably go back to war within the next five days. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, then we have some out of uh, character stuff, Swedish land grabbing crap. Uh, OOC and never attack to your allies. Excuse me. Uh, I had chicken parmesan earlier and uh, was trying to say hello. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Sweden open fi opens fire onto villages and uh, oh, the Finnish town that is right here. Um, at 3 a.m., Swedish cannons open fire, uh, displacing refugees from Lapland. Uh, Swedish government using the Finno-Polish war as leverage to further invade the nation. It's true. Uh, if Finland fights back Polish troops that attempted to invade several weeks ago, it would yet again. It, it will be again. It, uh, it's gonna get invaded again. <laughs> um, okay, Finnish artillery fired on uh, Polish troops who are still at war with the nation of Finland. Uh, President Manaheim uh, has called for an emergency meeting with ministers and will further appeal to the to the League of Nations for assistance. Uh, 150,390 persons from Lapland and uh, that place evacuated to that other place. Civil Guard at that place, barely 10,000 reservists, are currently waiting outside one of, outside of the villages in the region due to heavy artillery fire by the Swedes. Uh, using donated weapons as all Finnish weapons left over from the Civil War and manning the Polish front. Uh, 
there's a curfew for 7 p.m. and uh, power is limited to uh, 12 hours a day I guess they're trying to conserve energy so yeah there's some war stuff going on then uh, Turk will talk about the Falkland Islands all right many poachers hunting the whales <laughs> near the Falkland Islands Argentinian government and true enter troops for St. Wales population. Okay, the Falkland Island is, will be, temporarily <laughs> under Argentinian <laughs> control uh, until British troops retake these, this, isle this islands for the British crown. Okay, so, uh, laughter aside, he's, he's just going to do the land swap to the Fal Falkland Islands in Umer or um, England's place. Because England obviously doesn't have enough troops at the moment because it's trying to do land swap everywhere. I actually don't think he's doing anything. But it's... He's, he's doing it. <laughs> he's, just, he's just very, very slow at it. Yeah, he's very... taking Newfoundland right now. Yeah. Alright, that's nice. He's doing something in Canada. Um, then Turk talked about a peace period, pointing that at uh, Sweden. Uh, I'm sure he didn't read it, but it's okay. This was around the time that Sweden tried to invade Finland again. Yeah. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. Then we have the Australian Daily. Australia condemns Iran and India. Uh, let me try and... Yeah, it's something about colonies in the British Empire. Uh, maybe I should read these things before I start recording. Nah. I skimmed it. <laughs> yeah. Thought it would help. I'm trying to skim it. Something about diapers and 19 year olds. High They're school making... teachers being attacked or attacking high school teachers. Sounds like a really screwed up place. Um, India invades neighbor. Uh, despicable actions of Iran. Sorry if Australia is watching this, but I'm trying to summarize this, and I'm doing a very poor job of it. I uh, think essentially he's anti-Middle East, or anti-India, <laughs> Pakistan, and Iran, Persia. He doesn't like Southwest Asia. Um, I, can't, I can't say he likes Japan too much either. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Muslim Alliance, take it away. All right. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs has consulted with several nations about forming an alliance for trading and mutual defense. The current working name is Muslim League, but that is subject to change. So, um, the nation of the Sultanate of Egypt has declared a... It's, it's more political than religious, but it's supposed to be like a cultural alliance. And it's currently just him. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, is, even up to, yeah. t up to the next day, which we haven't gotten to yet, it's just him. There's no one else joining him. <laughs> okay. uh, yeah. All right. Well, pretty much, he, he like, invited uh, co colonies of France and people to this. Like, you see French West Africa, Algeria, Saudi Arabia, Iran... Uh, a Russian state, um, the United States of India and Pakistan, uh, and the Netherlands. Netherlands, I know, refused it. I'm sure everyone else will. Oh, actually, I don't know. Saudi Arabia may accept that. And maybe Iran. Speaking of Iran, I'm going to talk about his post right here. Responding to Australia... Okay, he misspelled claims in that one, too, uh, Turk. Um, Alright, so, I, I now I know what Australia and uh, all this is all about. So, Australia thinks that Iran invaded part of the British Empire, and the Iran, India, Pakistan are like, no, we didn't. And uh, Australia insists they did. Uh... That's basically 
Yeah, I guess it's because Australia thinks that uh, Afghanistan was part of the British Empire. And, um... Was it? I don't think so. It was... Uh, Afghanistan apparently was part of Iran and never was independent until the Treaty of Paris, he says. But I'm not... Uh, I personally don't know how true that is. Uh, but we're gonna go with that for now, because we don't know any better. better. Now you get to summarize the um, English post, the really long one. Er oh, how lovely. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, I've already read this. So, um, basically, uh, the British respond to the Falklands issue that Argent Argentina brought up. This is all because of land swap, obviously. I don't understand why they're actually role-playing the land swap, but it's their opinion, and I'm fine with that, as is everyone else. And then he states about um, he states his concerns for the South Africa conflict. South Africa, for the time being, is growing more and more unstable as a country, and people think it's most likely turning to communist rule or socialist rule instead of like, uh, you know, imperialist. And finally we have the British talking about relations coming back together with Pakistan and possibly India because mm -hmm. after Pakistan and India declared independence they had like a rough patch and yeah that's it All right, I also read here um, apparently England doesn't want Argentina to take Falklands uh, he's like the poachers dwelling in Falklands doesn't mean that Argentina can invade British islands we will never allow that. So, uh, yeah, we'll have to watch that. I mean, Argentina really could kick England's butt just because, uh, you know, he's industrialized this entire country. But uh, maybe we'll see a Falklands war. You know, about 100, or not 100, but, uh, what, 80 years before it actually happened? Or... Yeah, an early <laughs> Falklands. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, Canada's post. Didn't read this myself, but, um... Alright. Alright, um, what he's doing is he's... commenting on the, uh, Afghanistan issue here. Uh... Says that Canada was a factor when former British, Pakistan, and Iran were at, the, at war. Uh... Australia's right, and uh, yeah, I guess he's taking Australia's side on this, and um, other than, oh yeah, he's putting a trade embargo on Iran for once more, or once more for illegally taking lands, and uh, Okay, Canada wants to join the League of Nations. Alright, I, I haven't seen that before, so maybe no one else noticed it either. Um, you get to talk about the mighty Singapore Empire. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so the Singaporean Empire. So, current Singapore is a tiny four-province nation that Fogg will most likely scroll to. Uh, yeah, one second. Just waiting for him to scroll. Yeah, he's this orange one right here, guys. So that thing right there used to be in China. It used to be the Republic of China. And he 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 sort of lost, and then he quit the war. And I gave him a few provinces, and he saved himself again. And now he's declaring himself an, an important empire that will be attacking Siam very soon. We'll, <laughs> we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Here, I'm gonna have to sell them troops again. Yeah, a lot of them. Um, Alright, Egyptian comedy and buffoonery. Uh, let's see. Okay, so pretty much France is uh, mad because, you know, as we saw earlier, Egypt is inviting French colonies to join his uh, league. Uh, 
<laughs> he's asking the British to place a higher control on the Engl on the Egyptian press. So ridiculous news like that doesn't reach uh, the general pu the general public. And um, you know it's funny for the French. French are laughing. They probably peed themselves a few times. Probably didn't shower afterwards or change their pants or anything. But that's that's their <laughs> problem. <laughs> French jokes, oh my god. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, um, France asks Egypt to stop communicating with French colonies or possessions as the answer to French to France only. Uh, Egypt is ran by infants who seemed <laughs> to. <laughs> They're kids. He just calls them kids. Yeah, babies. <laughs> All right, Egypt is ran by infants who seem to not understand what a colony is, and sometimes it's hard to take these news or actions seriously and not feel like Egypt is making fun of the world's institutions and how the world works. Egypt, you are a colony. You don't have any power. If you want to do something, declare war on England for your independence and then do something. Um, that's that's my uh, input on it. Now I'm gonna continue back on the article. Uh, <laughs> okay. While Australia portrays India to be ran or to be run, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna correct that to be ran by a child. It seems that it is Egypt that is, in fact, ran by an infant in the body of, a, of an adult uh, in the person of Sultan Fuad. Fuad. Sounds like food. Um, or it looks kind of like a weird way to say food. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's actually... Wait... It could be converted to a Turkish name, too. If you just replace the D with T, it's what? <laughs> Foot. Foot food. Um. Uh. <laughs> While the League of Nations has allowed for representatives of the Egyptian nation to be in the League of Nations, Egypt is now permanently banned from entering any League meeting. Yeah, France doesn't like Egypt, guys. Um, you get to talk about the false claimus. All right, false claimus. Uh, Iran once again officially say that it is neutral towards any international matter as long as it doesn't put independence independence of Iran or her allies at risk. So basically, this is the Persian rebuttal to Australian claims for Afghanistan. And I think, like in my personal input, this could be a war. <laughs> <laughs> However, I highly doubt that Australian power reaches that far. No, I don't think so. Alright, you done with that one? Yep. Okay, done. nice. Uh... Alright, Turk made a just little clarification up there. Eh, we can skip that if you yeah, want. Yeah, we can. I was just reading it because I don't think I read it earlier. Egyptian diplomacy. Apparently, the Egyptian Ministry of Foreign Affairs has committed a diplomatic fox pass while attempting to deal with people sharing a cultural background. Proper channels were not used. It shall be avoided in the future. As for being banned from the League of Nations, it is only a slight disappointment since Egypt has only been granted observer status. Egypt does not suggest that, or does, Egypt says that we should change it to the League of European Nations. Uh, because it's more of a, it's made up more of Europe. European countries, and uh, in, a rel in a related note, it has been observed that Francophone nations, whatever that's supposed to mean, have a hard time communicating in English. Perhaps they should stick with French and allow the world to translate if necessary. So I guess he's trying to say France doesn't know how to 
the right or something. Basically, he's <laughs> francophone nations are um, like essentially French-speaking colonies or French-speaking countries. Yeah. Oh, my post. Uh, the Australian Daily, Iran's foolish claim. So it's just continued rebuttal. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna sum this up by saying they're literally making fun of each other. Yeah, pretty much. Um, New Zealand awaits approval to the UN. I've got a like ten word one to summarize. They want in. That's all I can say. Uh, I'll go ahead and do the League of Nations grows one. So now the members list has a been or is now made up as of this post is made up of France, Germany, Netherlands, Spain, Britain, Japan, Belgium, Argentina, and USA and New Zealand awaiting confirmation. We eventually let New Zealand and the US doesn't really want to join as uh he doesn't historically. Alright, you've got the Polish one that he posted with like two minutes left in the day. Uh, I feel really sorry for him for this post because he could have posted like Five minutes later, and it would have been perfect. Yeah. But yeah, Polish leadership from all factions agree. So they held a national summit for all Polish leaders <laughs> in order to uh, form an actual government for the Polish Republic, or the Polish nation. And currently, they fear their sovereignty be being taken due to German and Finnish um, influence in their regions or the fact that Finland has an artillery brigade very close to their uh, their cities. Did they actually mention German in that? Uh, I'm sure they meant it. I'm sure they're afraid of it. I know, I know in the future post we'll have to get to that. Uh, they, yeah. But no, I don't, he doesn't mention Germany in that one, but he will in one soon. So yeah, um, I, I guess this one he focuses on Finland. And he's he applaud he apologized to the Finland government. Yeah, he plans on repaying them for uh, invading them very poorly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, day seventeen, the current day. Oh, the tech's up! Yay, he did make it in time. Um, Algeria finally goes uh, AI, by the way, so you can replace them. Uh, oh yeah, this is what I was talking about here. The spy that was captured that is not a German spy. We promise, it's a mistake set up framed um yeah russia and sweden are at peace now i guess i've put a trade embargo on sweden uh yeah the war for bhutan is going on already it's about to fall uh new zealand is still fighting papa or Papuan New Guyana, yeah, the New Guinea, I and mean, wh whatever you want to call it, the thing over Australia in Af or in Asia, yeah, that that's what we'll say. All right, you get the Netherlands. No, no, it's my turn. Okay, Netherlands news. Um, economy's going great. Dutch armed forces are stepping forward. Uh. They're progressing, they're making planes, uh, ships, they've got the Fokker company from Germany since after Germany it moved back to the Netherlands because Germany couldn't make any planes. So, uh, and that's where it stayed until it went bankrupt in uh, 1990, I believe, or 2000 something. Mm -hmm. So, uh. And, that, and that's um, it? No, 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 I just. Okay. I thought I had the burp again. Um, Queen's taking a good look at how much money they spend on a uh, military. Uh, Antarctica, they've sent an expedition to Antarctica, uh, and they've claimed a sixth of the uh, area. The one by the, or it's by the English one, I guess. Uh, citizens in the Netherlands are proud of this. Uh, 
the Queen actually paid for some of this she uh, donated to the expedition so good for her she's a nice queen um, end of child labor no longer do children have to work and schools are being built all that good stuff kids are gonna all get right. smart learn how to read go to college go out on dates get drunk at parties all that um, <laughs> <laughs> and then, life aside. Yeah. <laughs> and then um the Netherlands say that we should, or the League of Nations should uh, accept the country of Finland, which I also back up as Germany. Now you get to cover the Chinese Civil War so far. Alright, I'm going to take the next two posts to All make right. things easier. So, um, the first Chinese, let's see, oh there it is. The first Chinese post is by Xinjiang, which is Xinjiang, and he basically states, who has most control in the region of China at the moment, and they themselves are ahead by 35%. The Fangtians are second with 27% of the territory, the Ma are third with 18, and then we have Yunnan and Guangxi with 11 and 9 respectively. And basically he just summarizes who uh, who leads the alliances, or the, the factions of the Greeks, and basically what they intend to do at the moment. Yeah. And then the next post is focused on Xinjiang's military and what they intend to invade. Currently, at the moment, they're invading the Yunnan clique, which is the Union of Indochina right there at the at the top, at the bottom corner. And yeah, and they're doing well actually. They're they're nearly they've nearly taken two to three provinces. Hmm. So uh. Judging by his uh, estimates on how much of China is controlled by him and uh, Zhu Zhan, or whatever you said, Yunnan, yeah, I'm going to call it Yunnan, uh, he'll be getting that 11% from them, which will put him up at a, uh, let's see, 46. Yeah, so he'll have almost half the nation by the time he takes over that country, so he's uh, he's my favorite to win at the moment, unless the other ones can pull off a upset. Uh, League of Nations update. Um, let's see. France, Germany, Netherlands, Spain, Britain, France, Belgium, Argentina, uh, New Zealand, and the U.S. is still pending. Proposed members, Finland and Venezuela. Um, I say let them both in. Uh, Operation Icebreaker suspended. Uh, right. <laughs> yeah, um, looks like there's an issue with their stockpile of shells set to be used for the final march of South Lapland and, uh, Northern Finnish Dula. Um, Okay, so, many so I guess, um, oh, the shells exploded, and uh, they lost all their artillery shells, and that's pretty much what he's saying was the reason for him not invading Finland today was, and uh, he's blaming the sabotage on um, Finland, and Finland didn't do anything, he's just building up reasons to invade Finland <laughs> right now. Um, then Poland's like uh, wrote an article for some reason posted it on yesterday's paper. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we got that already. So, French presidential elections. Uh, he's got the three candidates. The one on the left is anti-German, so of course I don't want him to win. Uh, the central one is a radical socialist, so let's not have him win either. Uh, the one on the right is a famous lawyer. Uh, and, uh, not, and he was, a. Uh, let's see, he's been in Parliament, uh, he's been on the Progressist Republican Group, he was elected Vice President of the Chamber, devoted himself to the struggle throughout France, uh, or struggle against the left, my bad, I skipped a line, uh, he is the favorite to win the election. 
So, the other one on the right right here is looking like the next French president. So, good for him. Uh, you want to cover the German spies one from Poland? I'm sort of confused of what happened there. Can you can you give me like a summary of that? Of uh, the, the spies? Yeah. Uh, okay. I spy bombed the crap out of Poland. <laughs> <laughs> because I thought... Um, Poland and uh, Sweden were going to end up invading him again. Oh, we're at 30 minutes. Okay, we're not going to meet our, meet our goal, but 40 minutes is our backup goal, and we're going to meet that. Gotcha. So, uh, yeah, uh, German spies. Out of character, I spy bombed him with like seven spies. He only caught one. And that's, and now uh, me and, um, Poland are getting together and we're going to role play this thing out. We're going to drag it out a day or more and uh, uh, make, you know, good posts about it. Just, you know, add some, you know, another flavor of the role play other than just like, I hate your country. Why did you do this? You're stupid. You're stupid. No, you're stupid. All that, like, you know, <laughs> India, Classical Pakistan, and... <laughs> yeah. So, um, pretty much, he caught a spy in, uh, I can't remember where he caught it. I guess it was in his capital or something. Uh, and, um, he's condemned, or he's asked the League of Nations to condemn me. They're not going to. Uh, yeah. It's and then, fun. uh, yeah, the German spy, rogue, radical, post by me, uh, president says uh, that definitely wasn't a spy uh, we don't know what you're talking about tell us the identity of the person and we can you know figure out who this person is it it's probably you know uh, it could be a rogue or some radical working by himself and uh, yeah that's what we're gonna be role-playing together soon um, you want to read the Laughlin diaries post yeah that's a good uh, article the two articles a, he does yeah. on that uh, diary, that's really good. Alright, Lapland Diaries, Volume 1. Mother says we're going to the lake today. I've gathered my swimsuit, but I've decided, uh, but I've yet decided I should, if I should go in. It's barely summer. End of entry. Mother's woken me up. Barely striking three in the morning. She says the army has begun... She, she, ah, I can't, I can't speak. Um, she says the army has told us to leave everything and begin going south. I've yet to understand why. End of entry. Possibly unfinished. Mother refuses to leave the house. I've gotten quite scared. I hear constant gunfire. An explosion almost hit the house. A wounded soldier limped to the door. We didn't know if we should let him in. He was bleeding in the leg, so Mother helped him. Uh, let him in and we helped him. End of entry. Mother told me to run to the army people. She was busy helping the soldier. It took me a good 25 minutes to find a soldier. He told me to give him my address, go home, and gather my things, and leave as soon as possible. I ran home as fast as possible. A few minutes later, I saw a large explosion where the soldier was, but I was too scared to go check. End of entry. We've waited one hour at home, but nobody came. Mother decided that we should take the horse. I took only my clothes and diary. Mother took the front of the horse while I was at the back with the soldier. His eyes were not open, but I could feel him quenching my hand. Quenching? Okay, quenching. Um, mother tells me we are going to Vasa. It's named after a Swedish king. I've never met a Swede. We've been on the road for hours. I've seen a hundred or so families. None of my friends yet. End of entry. We've gotten to the Oulu border. The army is here, but they've told me they're surprised due to the lack of no one else. I've noticed there was not many people on the road. They've given us water and food. We've given the wounded, we've given the wounded soldier to the army hospital. They thanked us. They have showed us to a temporary house that we can stay in. End of entry. That's some scary stuff. Yeah. All right. Uh, I guess I'll go ahead and cover the second one. Uh, Today I asked uh, mother when we would begin to go Vasa, and uh, she said we may go home soon instead. 
Two hours after this, a truck of uh, soldiers came in. They brought them inside the house. They've all been wounded. They're speaking Finn or Swedish, so I cannot understand them. Well, you've met some Swedes now, haven't you? One of uh, the Finnish soldiers had told me they're wounded Swedish soldiers. I gave them water and food. The army has brought a man in. He speaks Finnish and Swedish. They've instructed him to tell the Swedish soldiers that they are running out of food and won't be able to feed him. At this point, I told the general that I would give my food to them. The general then instructed the man to tell the Swedish soldiers I would give them provisions. It's been several days now. One of the Swedish has died of his wounds. We buried him outside. We are longing to go home. We've begun to hear large explosions everywhere. Mother and I have brought the soldiers into the kitchen with us. It's the safest part of the house. More Finnish wounded have been brought in. This time the general had been hit in the head with shrapnel from an explosion. There's explosions everywhere. I don't know what to do. One of the soldiers had become, begun to hug me. End of entry. At this point, a shell hits the house, killing everyone inside. Mary Haitunen, diary writer, her mother, three unknown Swedish soldiers, Finnish army officer, and soldier. Uh, yeah, they're all dead. In the capital today, uh, seven coffins of the second invasion, or casualties of the second invasion are being warned. Uh, yeah, they had a ceremony for them. Uh, there's reports that Swedish artillery moved into Russia to begin bombarding uh, the town of St. Michael, as it's known in the English translation of the name. But the 5,000 or 50,000 possible casualties was avoided for for reasons unknown. All right, now you get the Swedish president visits Lapland some good Soviet propaganda. All right. It is a historic day in Lapland as the provinces formally rejoin Sweden and the peoples will join once more. The speech was given in both languages. Comrades, brothers and sisters, today we bring you freedom. Today the bourgeoisie has been taken out and the revolution has brought you, the proletariat, your freedom. So the imperial czars who separated our two great nations to weaken us have been destroyed and yeah classic propaganda speech oh yeah <laughs> you know all that's right it. That's two minutes much it. two minutes until we've hit 40 minutes uh we've got how many posts to go one two we got two okay uh mine pretty much in mine i can summarize this greatly uh we do not recognize um, Upper Lapland as uh, Swedish. We say it should go to Finland, so we're not going to recognize their control over Lapland. Uh, also, we've declared that Germany is now protecting Finland from Sweden and Polish aggression. And uh, we request from the League of Nations that uh, the, the League of Nations admits Poland into the League, into the League as soon as possible. Uh, we request more nations give vocal support for the Finnish. Uh, only together can we stop the illegitimate government which has captured Sweden from expanding its silly government uh, and ideo ideolo ideology <laughs> over free people such as the Finns. Uh, let's not let the stories written by the now forever lost Finnish girl which were published by the Finnish government fall deaf upon our ears and blind upon our eyes uh, just because our people aren't suffering at the hands of aggression or conquest does not mean that we can ignore it we in the league search to enfor enforce and protect peace in the world how can we accomplish this while we have a free nation such as Finland slowly being devoured and harassed by Sweden? We must protect the Finns. And I've uh, banned travel and trade and embargoed them. And uh, we no longer recognize the communists as the legitimate government of Sweden. 
Uh, now India's post. I can also summarize this. Um, go Pre for it. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, he's taking over Bhutan, and uh, there's some stuff about. Oh, uh, hmm. Apparently, India applied for uh, memberships and was uh, ignored. Interesting. I didn't see him apply, so I guess he applied to France directly, and France may not have gotten on since he wrote that, so... Uh, we we'll should see. <laughs> we should, yeah, we should. Um, we'll have to do that sometime. Okay, we'll go uh, tech level. Whoa, my timer has gone to negative 23, 19, oh, so, okay, it's counting down. I don't know what that means. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> I don't know. I've never had that before. Anyways, I think we're over 40 minutes now. Um, uh, rank ups. Argentina is now tech 3. They can make level 2 factories. Good for them. Right. Uh, the Americas. Uh, the US is about halfway to tech 5. Uh, Argentina uh, is about a third way to Tech 3. And, uh, yeah, other than that, no one's really doing anything. Canada's um, a fourth of the way to Tech 2. Africa, we have um, French Algeria about halfway to Tech 2. And then the rest, not even close. Europe, Switzerland has been added because Rick Wong will be playing Switzerland. Uh, he's obviously got zero points because he actually doesn't have Switzerland yet. Uh, and not bombed anything that Switzerland had. Uh, Denmark is not close. Britain is a sixth of the way to Tech 5. Uh, Ireland's about a fourth of the way to the next Tech. Sweden is almost a third of the way France is a, a twelfth of the way. Belgium is a fourth of the way. Uh, let's see, Netherlands is a, a fourth of the way, roughly. Me, myself, I am a fourth of the way. <laughs> We're all getting there. Slowly, but surely. I've... Okay, Sweden has the most tech points. Followed by Belgium, Netherlands, or I think Netherlands actually has the most. Yeah, it's Netherlands, Sweden, Belgium, me. <laughs> oh, Italy's ahead of me by one point, of course. Um, Russia. Uh, yeah, it's Russia. Yep. China, the Ma Kui is uh, about to get to level. Protect too, so that's nice for them. Middle East, Iran is just over halfway to Tech 3. Japan is halfway to Tech 5. Congrats. Uh, all over. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. That is all that we have to go over in the DE. Um, the Netherlands is still number one, followed by the US, England, France, Britain. Italy, where's Japan? Oh, Japan's 11th, wow. You got dropped down. Yeah, I thought you'd be higher than that, actually. Uh, yeah, so... Ah, oh, crap, I've got the units on again. <laughs> Good. I don't think anyone will have noticed anything in time, so they'll have to pause it, and then they'll have to... Yeah, they won't know what it all is. Um, anything you want to talk about on the map itself? Um, I guess currently the remaining land swap would be important. Okay. Alright, so let's start with North America. Britain has to take the three remaining provinces of Baffin within these, this region over here that Fog's probably pointing to. Uh, I think I'm pointing at it. Yep, alright. 
Canada's doing well with its land swap. Uh, moving down, we have... Right, I was going to ask Brazil and Venezuela. The province of Vila Bittencourt, that province right there, that should be um, Brazilian. Just saying. Yeah, I see it, okay. And then, obviously, the Falklands and St. Helena should be British. Oh, also, Nassau should be British as well. It's still Confederate. Yeah. Um, in Africa, we have a lot of land swap done, but a lot still left to do. Let's start with French West Africa. He has to take the provinces of Kankan and Big Nona from British West Africa, as well as the last remaining province of Upper Volta. We could use a guy for Nigeria, for that province, Paracal. French Gabon and Ubangishari should be French. I don't know when Fog's going to help with that. <laughs> I don't know either. And obviously Portuguese Mo Mozambique is nearly done. Almost. Almost. I mean, and they, they still could come back and beat the Portuguese. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be fun to RP. Oh, yeah. Asia is actually done with Lancelot, like major, mainly done. We just have uh, New Zealand and Australia that are going to take the three remaining provinces of New Guinea. That's it. We're nice. good. And then um, Russia Civil War, nothing going on there. China, well, uh, this purple one's getting eaten. Uh, other than that, there's nothing else going on really. Um, Rick Wong is due to return or to enter Switzerland in one day, fourteen hours. So we're excited. Right. We're excited to see him in uh, Switzerland. Oh, and we have a Denmark. We have now filled the, the Danish spot. So he'll be taking Denmark sometime soon. Um, any any other news? Did we get any anyone? Uh, no, not for the time being. All I right. hope people join. Yeah, we have a French West Africa, or not French West Africa, but French Algeria. That's open. And uh, Nigeria is open. Uh, is uh, Equatorial Africa supposed to be playable? It's it's not supposed to be playable. Okay. It's actually got someone playing it. Uh, yeah, but uh, I don't think he's active because I've asked him for troops to help out with... Cameroon and he ignored it or yeah I don't think he's active um, we have Ethiopia open if anyone wants to be Ethiopia the only independent African nation in Africa um, and you know annex Africa as Ethiopia that would be quite funny uh, other than that I don't think we have any open slots do we nope uh, well Mexico is in the er, is Mexico playable one no? Yeah, it's playable. Okay, Mexico's open, because they went inactive uh, yesterday, I think. Or two days ago. Um, other than that, there's nothing I can think of. So, uh, if you're interested in any of the ones we do have, you can contact Lightning Turk in-game, and uh, he'll get you in. So I'm odd, so I'm always, always around. And he's yellow too, so uh, send a message on on chat that way they can see your username, I guess. Although they all know you. I mean, who doesn't know Lightning Turk? <laughs> all right, there he is, right there. Good evening. And uh, with that, we say good evening, good night, goodbye. Thank you for joining. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. See you next time. Hold on, we got a post. We got another post in D. We're going to have to cover that real quick. It's Argentina. Yep. What is this? Presidential speech. You cover that. Oh, hell no. Alright. <laughs> um, super skimming it right now. I saw right, sting like a bee or fly like a butterfly sting like a bee, so I guess he's about to box someone or something. <laughs> uh, let's see. Argentinian industrialization. They've grown a tech level, so I'm guessing he's posting on that. Yep. Oh, he's talking about his aircraft that sting like a bee. <laughs> oh.
And then the South American Alliance, he is allied, well, he's like got good relations with Brazil and Venezuela, the only other two countries in <laughs> South America. That's a good thing. And trade relationships, he's got trade with nearly everybody. That's a lot of people. Not me. <laughs> nearly everybody. <laughs> and then the Falcons issue. They're not going to be... Yeah, it's just... yeah, They're just role-playing Lance Walton. All right. Yep. So, yeah. For real this time, good night and goodbye. Hope you enjoyed. Like, subscribe. See you next time. Well, I, I guess Turk's not going to say bye. Bye. There we go. All right, see ya.